Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living North Metro and a happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful mothers out there. I'm Reverend Michael Torfey. I'm Reverend Valerie Torfey. I'm Dr. Ernestine Garcia. I'll be doing the readings today. I'm Jake Fernandez. I'm Robin Hackett and I'll be doing special music for you. And my name's Anthony Pritchard and I'm your moderator today. He's also the person who taught us how to do all of this stuff and we can't we will forever be grateful. Yes. And he helps us out when we need it. We really appreciate him. And if you ever need any of this kind of stuff, go see him because he's a genius. So um, would you like to pray us in? I would. So I just invite you to close your eyes and take a deep cleansing breath. So we just like breathe in God and breathe out anything we might be thinking about or that might be troubling us or it might be a problem. Just breathe it all out and take another really deep breath as we recognize there is only God, one God, one power, one presence that is in, as, and through my, me and each one of us. And it is as and through every aspect of this service this day. It's in as and through Anthony and Ernestine and Robin and Jake and and uh, the people that are here with us today, Connor and Susan and everybody that's joining us online. So we just know that right where we are, God is, and we're just knowing that this is an uplifting and wonderful day. <laughs> so I release it, and together we say, and so it is. So it is. So it is. So it is. Hmm. And we have the wonderful, magnificent Robin Hackett as our special music, and I'm I'm just can't wait to see what she's got for That's us. Right. <laughs> All right, I like to sing this song. Uh, it's called Forever Young. It's a Bob Dylan song, but I don't think it's about forever young. I think it's about being forever pure of heart. May God bless and keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the sky and climb on every rock. And may you stay forever young. Forever young, forever young, may you stay, may you stay forever young. May you grow up to be righteous, may you grow up to be true, may you always know the truth. See the light surrounding you. May you always be courageous, stand upright, and be strong. May you stay forever young. Forever young. Forever young. May you stay. May you stay forever young. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of change to shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. And may you stay forever. Forever young, forever young, may you stay, may you stay forever young, forever young, forever May you stay, may you stay forever. 
forever young. May it stay, may it stay forever young. Forever young. That's a wonderful song. And it's so appropriate for today being Mother's Day. So thank you. We'll get back to you in a um, few, few minutes. I got to. She finally can hear you now. Oh. <laughs> well, miracles are all around us. No, I mean, she just <laughs> missed everything you said. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. okay. <laughs> I know your heart was pure. You said lovely things. <laughs> and we love that song. And we love your voice when you sing it. It's just really powerful. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So the mission statement for the Center for Spiritual Living North Metro is to create an open, accepting learning environment that recognizes and embraces diversity, peaceful resolution to conflict in personal and community relationships, and to help make the world a better place. So it is. And so it is. So uh, like us and check on, on Facebook at CSL North Metro, and go check out our website, cslnorthmetro.org. You can go to the contact list to add yourself to the email list. You can request prayer there. And the uh, affirmations and the uh, the what else is here? Mm -hmm. Then the prayer are out there on the website for you to use too. And Reverend Michael does a really great blog once a month, and uh, they're all out there, so that's really fun too. I just love that word blog. No, I think it's kind of dumb, but that's what they're calling it these days. I used to call it a newsletter. Okay, so our today's title is Mommified. You've already met our wonderful guest artist, our inspirational music for today. Oh, I'm not plugged in. Where the heck is my cord? I am plugged in. Oh, hang on. That didn't help either. Did it? Can you see? I think it's okay. It sounds good. Well, no, I think I can't see if it's plugged in or not. I, I mean, it is plugged in. Well, let's see. Let's hope I don't lose it. I don't have a little light on that so I can tell if it's plugged in or not. But um, I think I'm plugged in now. Hopefully. Yeah. If the screen goes good. dark. It sounds good. Screen, if the screen door's dark, well, no, I'm not. So uh, where was I? You just finished the blog. Oh, today's reading is from Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. That's all of my part. Dr. Ernestine, take it away. You're doing great, Reverend Valerie. <laughs> well, at least that may be discovered, but anyway. Okay. Um, usually we start with the affirmations uh, for the week of May 14th. 2023, written with love by Stephan Anthony. Please repeat after me. I connect with my most authentic self now. I connect, I connect with, with my most, most authentic, authentic self, self now. now. The, the world receives and returns the light I carry within. The world receives and returns the light I carry within. Everywhere I am is right where I need to be. Everywhere I am is right where I need to be. I choose to create the life I desire, and the universe supports me fully. I choose to create the life I desire, and the universe supports me fully. My inner wisdom 
guides me truly and clearly. <laughs> My inner wisdom guides me and truly guides me truly and clearly always. I am presented with opportunities for graceful growth and expansion. I am presented with opportunities for graceful growth and expansion. And together we say. And, and so it is. Um, I would like to wish everybody a mother, a happy Mother's Day. Um, the title of the reading today is um, The Father, Mother, God. It's from the book, The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. It is related that while Jesus was talking, he was told his mother and brethren, 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 <laughs> waited to speak with him. But he answering said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? He then told them that whoever does the will of God is his mother, sister, and brother. He then told them that whoever no, then the next part is, we are not to suppose by this that he did not care for his earthly parents or friends, his mother or his brethren. He was explaining that anyone who lives in harmony with the truth automatically becomes the brother, sister, or the mother of all. This is a lesson in our brotherhood, sisterhood. God is Andred, mm, Andred anonymous. Oh, there it is. And, uh, Andrew, Andrew. Okay. somebody help me. <laughs> Reverend Valerie. Okay, Androgynous mean neither mother, neither male or female. I'll just go ahead. I hope everybody knows the word I struggled with. Androgynous, androgynous, androgynous principle. I got it. The father and mother of all. Our earthly parents symbolize this heavenly parentage. Jesus was a consciously cosmic soul who recognized his unity with all. He knew that love must become universal before it can re reach its maturity. Hence, he said that all who live in harmony with the truth are sisters and brothers in it. And together we say. So Do you want her to read it again? Um, we had a technical um, <laughs> proof out and we lost power. So we missed your reading. Would you, would you mind reading it again? I would be happy to read it again if you just give me a little tutorial on the word androgynous. Now I can't say it. Androgynous. Say it. Androgynous. Okay. Androgynous. I'm well, ready to say androgynous. You know that all the viewers heard the reading. Oh. Okay. But the people here sitting here with us didn't. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Take it away. Take it away. The title of this reading is the Father, Mother, God, from the book, The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes. And I think it's great that I get a second chance. It is related that while Jesus was talking, he was told that his mother and brethren waited to speak with him. But he answering said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? He told them that whoever does the will of God is his mother, his sister, and brother. We are not to suppose by this that he did not care for his earthly parents or friends. He, would, he was explaining that anyone who lives in harmony with the truth automatically becomes the brother, the sister, or the mother of all. This is a lesson in our brotherhood, sisterhood. God is the androgynous, androgynous principle. <laughs> the androgynous. Yeah, you guys know what I'm trying to say. 
the father and mother of all. Our earthly parents symbolize this heavenly parentage. Jesus was a consciously cosmic soul who recognized his unity with all. He knew that love must become universal before it, it can re reach its maturity. Hence, he said that all who live in harmony with the truth are sisters and brothers in it. And together we get to say one more time. And so it is. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and uh, we'll, we'll, oh, we won't see you at the end, will we? No. Okay. Well, thanks for serving us and have a wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Ah, some more, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been a fun morning so far. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a song that I, I, I really wrote for women. Um, yeah, that's it. It's called Flower in the Rain. Up from the ashes, awake from your sleep. Who'd I believed that you'd rise to see that it's all so perfect? The laughter, the pain, and there's nothing more beautiful than a flower in the rain. Well, I saw you under. And I saw you down I think you were lost But now you are found And it's so amazing To see you again And there's nothing more beautiful Than a flower in the rain And in be between summer and winter, there lies the promise of spring, and teardrops, raindrops, in season, and you're growing, and you're growing, and you're growing, oh. You stumble, and I saw you fall. But look at you now. You've come through it all. And it's all so perfect. The laughter and the pain. And there's nothing more beautiful than a flower in the There's nothing more beautiful than a flower in the rain. Yeah, there's nothing more beautiful than a flower in the rain. Ooh, ooh. So I'm going to wait a second so you can hear me. Wave when you can hear us. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hey. <laughs> wow, that's a long way. That is a long way. It is a long but way. But you're worth it. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, was that was good. That was beautiful. You're, you're, you're a wonderful writer. And... That song is just an indication of how talented you are. Thank you for oh, sharing that. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we'll be back for some All more. All right. I'll be sure. Okay. <clears throat> you. Okay. So today's title is Mommy Fied. And uh, you'll find out what that is about when it comes to Reverend Michael's part of this. Well, it's Mother's Day. Oh, yeah. uh, so, 
Well, yeah. explain mummy, mummified. I will. But... Okay. All right. So moving right along. <laughs> so interesting day already. So monotheism created a world of belief that God was only male, which successfully ended thousands of years of recognition of the divinity of the planet and the divine female. Far from only deifying men, this belief turned all that is female into sin. This has created a world that is out of balance because it values only male energy. The, is the 11th hour, our current economic failure, the increasing environmental crisis, and the increased polarization of right and left indicate that it's time to focus on re, rebalancing the energy of this planet, expanding our awareness of God as both and neither masculine and feminine and referring to God in non-gendered verbiage. We will create value and equality for all in religion and create an atmosphere for balance on the planet. I have always had a deep knowing, a deep passionate knowing, like a cord of memory to a distant time and a way of being that the patriarchal society we live in now wasn't always the way things were or even the way things should be, which generated my interest in the mythology of the goddess and matriarchal societies. So for more than 25,000 years, people lived in small, close-knit communities. Life revolved around the fertility of the earth and the female. Current knowledge of their lives is known through the work of archeologists on evacuation sites. There is so much to learn from the cultures of the rapidly disappearing indigenous peoples in the world today. Ancient peoples honored the earth. They lived their lives by using sacred ritual to create sacred space and sacred time and all that they did. They believed or knew everything is sentient, that the earth is a living being. The earth is sacred and brought forth life. They honored the earth and the fertility of it. They honored the sacred feminine and by extension, the human feminine, the sacred Oh, I'm not going to read that. The change from a matriarchal society to a patriarchal society began when the Indo-Europeans in about 5600 BCE advanced in all directions from what is now central Russia, eventually invading and conquering most of the known world over several thousand years. Thus evolved the period of which created the idea as male is divine and began to demonize the female. The historical evidence of the nearly complete, complete decimation of the culture and language of Europe and Asia over thousands of years by the Indo-Europeans clarified for me the massive shift from a peaceful civilization of honoring the earth and the feminine to a masculine culture of war. We see how patriarchal monotheism has been instrumental in creating the imbalance we're experiencing on the planet. It's time to remember the feminine face of God and to begin reestablishing and trusting relationships between women and men, as well as women and women. I was a feminist back in the 1970s as the only female banker in a world created for and by men. I soon realized that only masculine energy was val valued in the business world. I learned to become one of the men, to put away all that was feminine, especially my emotions to succeed in business. Gradually, I came to understand that the world I was fitting myself into was out of balance and consequently, I was out of balance. It is the blending of the masculine and feminine qualities that create harmony and balance in the world. In political protests and cultural revolutions, Barbara Epstein states, the movements of the 60s began not with revolution, but with the goal of making democracy real. My expansion in consciousness through the principles of religious science has taught me to open my heart and recognize the gift of the feminine. It is the state of unbalance between the masculine and feminine for several thousand years that has created the current world situation 
of power, greed, war, and global crisis. It's time to move the pendulum toward the center to a place where the divine is understood to be neither he nor she. Expressing in human form as both he and she, and as we know, much more than that. Androgynous. Androgynous, that's right. So however people identify and whoever they are, we value that. Many of the developed countries have made great strides in this direction with advances in human rights and renew rights and renewable energy. I believe that continuing to speak of God as he promotes the belief in the patterns of thinking the divine as a male judge outside ourselves. <laughs> and huh? Well, for me it does. And continues the pattern of devaluing the feminine. Degendering God and religion will be a big step to the new paradigm of valuing ourselves and our friends. I don't know, that's kind of what I grew up with was this kind of male Santa Claus figure who was writing down every single thing I did that was good and bad and there were going to be consequences for it. And so, you know, finding religious science in this teaching where we just believe we're on a, a path of growth and continued growth and continued growth is, is such an amazing thing. So, okay. I think I'm done now. So... Everything she just um, talked about makes, makes me realize how it, it's happening again, especially in this country, trying to um, depower the feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And really, we're here, it's Mother's Day. So I'm here to honor the mother and the feminine energy because um, it's the feminine, the feminine energy is the source of creation. It's, it's, it is an energy. It's, um, it's a way of being, a way of life. It's, it's an understanding of what life is through the feminine um, eyes. And I want to dedicate this, this service to my mom because she was a definitely, definitely a, a strong person. And I just want to um, share a little bit about her because she, she ran away from home after the eighth grade with, with a man who married her in Kansas or someplace where it was legal to marry somebody that young and went to New York and had my brother and moved back to Chicago, lost her father. He, he was a, an Irish drunk who this kidney exploded and my mom and my brother found one on the bottom of the stairs. So she, she went out into life with, with this strength of, of living with, um, well, she, she married, married nine times. And I had eight different stepfathers. She, um, she, Just having, having just gone through the eighth grade, she, at a point of her life, she was married to a man who was an accountant. So she took bookkeeping and became a bookkeeper. That, that's having just gone through the eighth grade. Then um, he wanted to, to learn how to fly, but couldn't get a license because he had some sort of skin disease that he could pass out. So. He told my mother that she had to learn how to fly. So she learned how to fly. And she was afraid of heights, but she learned how to fly. And she even got her um, instrument ready so she could fly anywhere at any time. And uh, they broke up. She went to real estate school, got a real estate license. She, um, she became a broker and was good at that. Oh. She had another husband who wanted her to learn how to navigate by the stars, so she took Coast Guard training. And somewhere in her 70s, she decided she wanted to get her um, GED because she didn't feel she was smart unless she had that. And, and it was incredible to, to experience my time with her and to see 
the powerful woman she was, even though she didn't think she was. She didn't think she was smart. She didn't think she was powerful. But she, there were times between husbands where she'd be a, a waitress and work as a waitress and she'd come home and we'd count her coins and her tips. And, and we, never, we never did without, if we wanted something, she'd find a way to get it for us. She was just um, an amazing woman. And to me, that's what I got to discover, having a mother and what mother energy is. Um, the Egyptians would mummify their, um, their people, thinking that they could take that body and um, transport it into the spiritual afterlife. But I, I don't think I would want this body to go to the afterlife where I'm at now, maybe when I was 25 or 30. So, um, We don't need to mummify our, our bodies. We need to mummify it. We need to mummify our heart. And um, there's there's two ways we can look at mother energy. The the one one way is to um, first think of your mom, and and did she did she present a path that you wanted to emanate, or was it a path that you wanted to not follow? And either way, um, that process of, of wanting to emanate your, your mom is, is the, momif the momifying, the momifying of the heart, because the heart is the place where the mother comes from, the heart is the place that that guides us as children. We um we we me and my brothers and I um, went through a lot with my mom because uh, she she uh, was an alcoholic and at the age of thirty two she decided that she needed help so she joined AA and she sent my brother. My younger brother and me, my two older brothers were gone out of the house at that time, but she sent my younger brother and me to Florida. We were living in San Francisco and she sent us to Florida to be with my dad. And uh, there was something in me that even though it hurt my heart, I knew that she was doing the right thing. And she's, she had 62 years of sob sobriety and and help so many people experience the same thing by sponsoring hundreds of people. And she spoke it all over the country because she was, she was an inspiration to people. So that was something that I wanted to emanate. I wanted to emanate um, her strength and her, her zest for life, her zest to keep trying and, and, and keep evolving. Now, some of us aren't, aren't blessed with mothers like that. Some of us have mothers that just have gone down the wrong path. <clears throat> there was a movie that we saw about this, this young woman who lived with two junkie parents. And um, she loved her parents, even though they were junkies. And, and she was in and out of the house, living sometimes in the streets. but. Because of her experience with this kind of mother, she was able to rise above it and, and get a degree from um, Yale or Harvard, one of those two schools, and, and went on to, to live a, a life divine. And who knows if she would have done that if she'd had any other mother. But the thing is, is she loved her mother no matter what the experience was. And we can do the same if, if, we've, if we've had an experience like that. Judging won't do any good, blaming won't do any good, but 
being thankful that your mother gave her body to allow us, you and I, to come into this world. And for that, we can be eternally thankful because what we do with this body and what we do with our lives is all up to us. And I, I really think that's, that's what being mummified means. It means um, embracing the feminine. Mother, mother is a feminine, and the feminine is um, so many things. The feminine is, is the um, the birther of life. Think about it. What would it be if there wasn't women in the world? We wouldn't be here, or what? Or if there was some way that you no know, men would never, men would never have it, have it in them to give birth to a baby. I know I couldn't. We can't take the pain, the strength and, and the, the power a woman has to, to bring life into this world. It, it just blows my mind. Mother, mother energy, feminine energy is um, unconditional love. I could, I could have turned out to be a killer or a bank robber or just a terrible person, and my mother would still love me. She may not like what I do, but she would love me. And there were times where I did get in trouble. I, I can remember this one time. I fell in love with this young woman, and I moved in with her, just like we've known each other two weeks. I moved with it, in with her, and within three days, I was out on the street because I lost my job. And I was out on the street, and it was like, I had no place to go. So I called my mom, she says, I got you, to, uh, I'll, I'll get you on a plane. Here's my credit card, go, go charge and get on the plane and come home. So I did and I was nurturing because mother, mother energy is, is nurturing, nurturing energy. Who, if we had nobody else, our mothers will nurture us. Mother's the healer. I um I I can remember one time she called me and I was I was sicker than a dog. And I didn't have the money to go uh, to a doctor. So my mother got on a plane and was there, turned out I had pneumonia, and she was there to take me to the hospital and take care of me. And, Nurture me back to life. I was blessed to have a mother like that. I mean, with all the the troubles she went through with Marion so many times and and just just always trying so hard to live life the best she could. She became an inspiration to me. And she still is. Mother motherhood is um the carry of all things possible. Mother, mother energy doesn't ever look at, I can't do this, or oh poor me. She just sees the possibility of, of life and, and gives it. Well, she gives it to me, she gave it to me. So the line that um, Jesus said, from the reading was, whoever does the will of God is my mother, sister, and brother. I think it's important to remember that you don't have to have given birth to a child to be a mother. You don't have to be female to be a mother. We have, um, we have people in our lives, young men who uh, are raising children all up by themselves. We have one in our room right now our, um, our goddaughter was raised by a, a young man who had mother energy. Um, who else? I can't think of it, but there, there are many. And they don't, they don't say, oh, poor me. They just do the mothering. And that is recognizing 
that feminine energy that is embracing the androgynous aspect of life because we all have female and male in us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a time when being a male, you had to reject any softness, be quick crying or, or- I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> We heard that one a lot when I was a kid. Yeah, and mostly males, but you yeah. you, you were always um, thrust into that male world. Uh, um, so embracing the mother energy is embracing the heart. I look around the world now, and there, there are more young men not just raising a child by themselves, but in within a marriage who are taking on the mother's mm -hmm. job and, and and the woman's doing the work. And that's a good thing. It's such a good thing to embrace all that that we are, embracing the gentleness, embracing the strength, embracing the power, embracing the love, embracing the connection to all of life and just knowing that we're not alone. God is always with us. I am, um, I um, looked up well, when I read, when I read this, this line, whoever does the will of God is my mother, sister, brother. When I read that, I, I asked the question, well, what is the will of God? So I looked up, what is the will of God? And um, I, this, this stood out for me, this explanation. My will, my will starts out easy and gets hard, and God's will starts out hard and gets easy. And that just rang so true with me, mm -hmm. because any time that I, that I listen to my inner voice where God speaks to me, and, and I hear that I got to do something, it, it is hard because it's usually challenging me to step out of my little self and to embrace my big self, to step out of my the self that says I can't do it and to step into the self that says, yes, I can. And to know that in God, I can do anything. In God, I'm guided, I'm directed, I'm maintained and I'm sustained. And it's always worked out for that. It's funny because um, you're always given what you need in any in, in, in the instant. Last night, um, Reverend Valley and I were talking about we gotta we gotta get back to doing yoga because it's gonna be good for both our backs. And what did you type in? The yoga came up. Oh yeah, I don't remember, but it did. I was trying to do something else, and the yoga came up. Yeah, we just we just finished talking about yoga. She typed something in the computer, and yoga came up. And we're like, okay, we get the message. We'll do yoga. <laughs> and there's so many things that happen all day long, and I really believe that it's the feminine aspect of me that has an easier time to listen than the male aspect of me, because. Um, The old version of male is to be strong, not in, not in a spiritual sense, but in a physical sense, to be, um, to be perfect, to, to be the um, provider. And if you can't do that, then you're, you're, you're worthless. And that's all history. We're, we're looking at the world changing in such strange ways because in one sense, it seems like we're going backwards, but in the other sense, we have to revisit those things to realize that we really haven't rid ourselves of it all. We haven't rid ourselves of, um, of old ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I believe 
these changes that we're going through are an indication of the, trans, the transforming of the human experience that we are um, we're going through an evolutionary change and uh, one of the, another indicator is um, the youth are um, tired of genderizing everything and they're trying to use instead of he or she use they and it works and it doesn't work because it gets confusing. Maybe not so much for the young people, but maybe it'd be easier to just invent a new word that that gets rid of this thing to generalize. We um or or we can all just get used to they. Yeah. It doesn't it's not that hard once you decide to do it. No. But it may be hard for people you're talking to. <laughs> I don't understand. That's true. But anyway, um, I, I'm, I really, from the depth of my heart, know that everything we're going through in the world now is for the higher good. Right. And these changes are going to take us into the new way of being. Whether it happens in my lifetime or not it makes no difference. I can be a supporter of it. I can be a, a, a contributor to it. And it, it will come from the feminine side and the softer side. I'm, um, I'm looking at Valerie and I'm thinking, we can watch a movie and I can be crying like a baby. And she's like, huh? Well, I do cry sometimes now. And when we met, I hadn't even cried for, I don't know, 20, 30 years, maybe. Yeah. That was the. Uh, there was you being forced into looking at the middle side. <laughs> you didn't have much of a choice. So. But it works out for the best because um, you have, it's been my experience with you that you've seen that aspect of you and how you were put into to the male world. And now you can embrace your female side because you're very intuitive and that's definitely feminine and and I noticed when I look around the house when I look at the garden how creative you are and I feel blessed for that I'm just rambling on and on and on but anyway if you're not if you're not embracing your especially to you know, you're not embracing your uh, feminine size, mummify yourself, mommyfy yourself, because it's worth the journey and you're worth having that experience. I'm going to um, do a guided meditation. Okay. Close your eyes if you would. And gently, to the best of your ability, clear your mind by focusing on something, one thing. Why don't, we, why don't we focus on an image of a mother to you? It could be your mother, it could be somebody else's mother, it could be a mother like Mother Teresa. But just bring a mother, a mother's image into your, into your consciousness. Really take it all in. What, what is she wearing? Does she have makeup on? What's the color of her hair? What's the color of her eyes? Is she tall? Is she thin? Is she heavy? Is she scary? Just take it all in. Now, allow yourself to feel her vibration as she stands there before you. What does that feel like? Allow that vibration to just vibrate into your being, into every atom of your body, into your heart, into your mind, 
into your liver, into your skin, where you're almost one with her. Maybe you're in her shoes now. And just feel the warmth, the strength, the power, the love. You claim it for yourself. That vibration that moved you, that injured you, that became you, is now you. A loving, caring being. And if you can think of one question you want to ask this mother, ask the question. Tap into her wisdom, into her intelligence. You may want to ask that question a few times. Because you can get different answers. Now just solidify the answer you got so you remember when you come out of the state and give thanks to this mother. Thanks for her energy. Thanks for her beingness. And say goodbye. And know this, that right where you are, right where I am, the infinite and eternal life of God dwells in all its glory, all its splendor, as the female, as the male, as the unending intelligence that guides us and directs us. And that the will of God is always closer than our hands and feet, nearer than our hearts, and ready to guide, not force its will, but just simply give its will, which is love in everything we do, everything we think about, everything we say. It's all love, it's all God, all the time. And as we know that we are one with God, we know it for every living creature, every living being, anywhere in the universe. We know this, this creative force that created the universe and everything that's in it is right where we are and it can be used. So let us say yes to this creative force. Let us say yes to the feminine aspect of our lives and go out and Spread the word, spread the cheer, spread the love, knowing that who we are is the difference that we want to see in the world. Who we are is the change we want to see in the world. And so we just live knowing this truth. We embrace it, we give thanks for it. And so I bless each and every soul that is within <coughs> the realm of my voice. That you are guided and directed always towards your highest good. And anything that you decide to, to follow the, the will of God may start out hard, but it always gets easier. And so I give thanks for your life. Give thanks for my life. Give thanks for life itself. So very grateful, eternally grateful. So there's nothing less to do. Nothing left to do. But say thank you and let it be. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> Today I saw the sun I stood out in the rain And watched the eagle fly again I heard a baby cry And walked right through the storm Felt the wind upon my face. 
And all the while I could not help but see The life that lives and breathes in you and me And I'm peaceful, yes And I'm grateful, oh And I'm thankful, oh Lord Yes, I am And I'm hopeful, yes And I'm so full and I'm thankful, oh, I am. I hugged an old oak tree, the earth beneath my feet, and saw a shooting star above. I looked into your eyes and touched an open heart fell into a hole out of love. And all the while I could not help but see the life that lives and breathes in you and me. And I'm peaceful, yes. And I'm grateful, and I'm thankful, oh Lord, yes I am. And I'm hopeful, yes. And I'm so full. And I'm thankful, oh I am. And I am so peaceful, yes. I am grateful. I am thankful, oh, yes, I am. I am hopeful, and I'm so full, and I'm thankful, oh, I am. Yes, I'm thankful, oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am, I am so grateful, so thankful, and hopeful, yes, I am, yes, I am. Can you hear that? I can. You came back fast this time. Wow. Then wow. we're yeah. thankful. Yeah. <laughs> Good song. one liners today, Michael. Good ones. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, we got some little business to do, and then we'll get back to you for the final song. Okay. All okay. Right. So all you folksies out there, this is your time to really get to share your appreciation for what we're doing here and what this community is doing. And uh, I can't say anything more than we're thankful for anything you, you wish to um, share with us as far as mana. It's always from heaven and you're heavenly by sharing. So uh, this is how you can do it. So you can see the Venmo uh, QR code right there. Go to our website, cslnorthmetro.org, and down the, about halfway down the, what are you doing? I'm not mind me. Oh, about halfway down the page, uh, there's a couple of ways to give. So, um, but, and we take checks too, and our, but our uh, address is right there too, so. So send your energy towards this basket, repeat after me. Thank you, O Lord, O God in heaven. Thank you, O O oh Lord, O oh God in heaven. That which dwells within me in all life. That which dwells within me in all life. I give from my heart. I give from my heart. Ever thankful for the good in my life. Ever thankful for the good in my life. And the continuous 
love that is all around me. And the continuous love that is all around me. For this and so much more. For this and so much more. I say thank you. I say thank you. And let it be. And let it be. And so it is. And so it is. Is that how we do? I think so. More music. the peace you want to see, then share your peace with everyone you meet, let it begin, let it begin, let it begin. You want to see, then share your joy with everyone you meet. Let it begin, let it begin, let it begin with you. love you want to see and share your love with everyone you meet let it begin let it begin It's a great way to end the service with such a beautiful message. It has to begin with you and me because it can't start anywhere else. So thank you, Robbie. You're welcome. It was nice hearing so many of your songs today. You're welcome. Ah. So, um, so join us on Zoom right after the service. We'd like to have a conversation. Share your aha moments and what was meaningful for you today. So... Uh, there's a Zoom ID right there, and if you miss it, it's on our website. So um, we hope to see you right after the service. Yeah. And happy Mother's Day, everyone, to yeah. all the mommies in every which way it is. Right. Yeah. The mommy dogs, the mommy cats, the mommy elephants. And the, the mommy daddies. The mommy daddies. Yeah. We're grateful. We're yeah. grateful for you and for being part of this, this wonderful thing we call it. Spiritual living. That's right. Is it? Well, if uh, yeah, bring us all back there. Anybody oh. have something they want to share? Yay! I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for the service and the message. Um, you know, in my culture, I uh, our many cultures. Um, you know, fathers and the male figure was definitely more important than the female. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm, you know, conscious now, but there's still parts of me that I have to look at. And, and one of it is referring to God as he. And so my uh -huh was that I'm going to try to refer to God as God. So thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And I, I, don't, I don't have a problem using God as it because God is energy. God is um, self-aware energy, creative energy. So that should be it with a capital I talking about the God energy. That's right. 
I have an odd thing that I want to share that popped into my mind is that I was watching the remake of Sex and the City yesterday. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but I found myself, because I think this is part of our culture, of judging the women because they all look older. Oh. And so, yeah, and so it was a great self awareness saying that I was looking at these women and going, oh my gosh, I can't stand looking at them because they look older. And, and first of all, yes. Ahead, so that's been part of, I think we've been enculturated, if that's a word, I don't know, with that thought. Um, and I was happy last night to, as I went on watching the show, to just become relaxed, like we're all going to grow old. It's okay, but celebrate that wisdom and that femininity and and uh, so it was really, really a great moment for me. Yeah. And when you look at Hollywood, they embrace men getting older, but women getting older have a hard time getting a job. Yeah. I mean, what? Guys like Clint Eastwood look like he's 30 still. So. Yes. We can change. We can make this place. <laughs> yes, we can. That's what I like about this teaching religious science, science of mind. Centers for Spiritual Living. It's a great name, Centers for Spiritual Living. We're, we're here to center ourselves in our spirit and live from the spirit. Right. Great way to be. Yes. Thankful. Yes. And that's okay. why I'm so grateful is that this is a place and a time to think about these things and talk about these things and learn new things. And just one more thing. I watched um, the newest Avatar meet movie and this is not a plug for the avatar movies but in in the way of the water it really looked at the fem feminine as the god it was she and it was mother nature and it was water and um it i need those reminders to combat the other stuff mm -hmm. yeah well thank you all thank you anthony Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, Robin, and you, Ernestine, and Jake, for hanging in there with her. And everybody that's joined us today, we appreciate you. Yes. And, uh, and those of you that are here, we appreciate you, too. <laughs> yes. It's very nice. All right. So uh, join us on Zoom, and we'll have some conversation. Yeah. Share some more. Okay. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Bye.